Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Mark from Solar Games. Um, feeling a little bit like apologies, first of all, for not making a video for a long time, and even larger apology for not making a video about my trip to Asia. Um, kind of sucks. I met a lot of you guys. There's so many things I wanted to say, and honestly, I probably should have said this like weeks ago. But you know, never you know better better late than never, right? And realistically, just been so many things. I literally come back from my trip, right? And I'm like, all right, I got all this plans, all this videos, whatever. And of course I go to work and it's like, you, you know when you watch those like uh, sitcoms and stuff and like, you know, like The Office, right? You, you walk in and, and Dwight just hand, hands you like this giant stack of paper. It's like that virtually, right? Obviously I don't get hand, handed like dead trees anymore. It's not how we do things in America. But dude, that inbox, whoo, that inbox and the Slack messages and all the freaking this this messenger app, that messenger app, like all the meeting invites, it, it was crazy. So kind of just getting through that, getting through all the, the backlogs on the solar games, like merchandising, market manipulation side of things too, just making sure those things are all running well oil machine going forward. Um, yeah, anyways, got through all of that stuff finally. Uh, and then I got kind of like sick a little bit. Like it's not really like I'm sick. I'm kind of like have this weird cough. Um, so that makes making a video really hard. Now that cough's kind of subsided a little bit, I may have a little cough here and there for the video, but that's why we have some water and stuff going on here in the back. Um, but today for the video, we're gonna talk all about the Asia trip. So, you know, it's not gonna be about Magic the Gathering, it's actually gonna be fully about Grand Archive. So I know on this channel, we don't do a lot of Grand Archive content, but really this one is so personal to me. And I think even if you don't like Grand Archive, um, if you like stories and just stories about people, you're gonna enjoy this video. So uh, let's kind of get things kicked off, right? So, you know, I get on this plane and uh, this whole trip, by the way, is uh, I'm flying out to Singapore to play at the Nationals, uh, the Southeast Asian Nationals for Grand Archive. Um, I have an invite, right, of course, for like that I can go to any Nationals. I, I decided to attend the one in Southeast Asia for that invite because um, I just kind of want to go to Singapore for a trip. It'd be kind of fun to just go visit and then, um, <laughs> I ended up also going to Taiwan and the reason for that is because for some weird reason, right? I was like buying tickets and the round trip ticket from here to Singapore and back was like, I forgot, it was like a thousand dollars or 900 something, right? But then I was like, oh, if I fly to Singapore, then take a one-way flight to Taiwan and then take another one-way flight from Taiwan back to like, you know, uh, Bay Area, San Francisco, um, it's like 600 something. I'm like, wait, hold on. So I can go to Taiwan. So anyways, this trip turned into Singapore to Taiwan to kind of Manila, uh, Philippines, but I was just at the airport. And it's a really complicated way to kind of get in and out of the airport. It's so crazy, by the way, that airport. Um, and then back home, right? So that's kind of like the trip. But first, of course, I get on the plane. We're going to Singapore. Um, funny thing on the plane, I do this plane is packed. Like we are sardines on this plane. I was flying, I think it was Philippine Airlines, right? So it's pretty nice. But man, it was freaking packed, bro. Like, um, no joke, the guy on my right was like going to a wedding. And uh, then I find out apparently Singapore, because it's such a, a large city with like lots of connecting flights in that Asia area, it's the Asian hub, right? So I know Hong Kong is kind of like the hub for like China and that area, but I guess a little bit Southeast Asia, Singapore is the hub. So half the plane is just flying to like India, like different parts of India, uh, Bangladesh, that area, right? The other half of the pl flight's like going to somewhere else. But basically, you got all these people going to like all sorts of places and barely anyone on the actual plane was going to Singapore. I'm like one of, like I don't know, 12 people who are actually going to Singapore. Anyways, uh, dude on my right is like flying home for a wedding. Legitly, he's like, I'm getting married. I'm like, bro, congratulations, you're awesome. Dude, dude on my left is like, Apparently I found out he's like super into whiskey. So we had this like crazy conversation about like scotch and all that stuff. And he was like, so I knew by the way, how I knew that he's super into whiskey. He asked for whiskey. Then he asked for water and then he put the water in the whiskey. I'm like, all right, this guy knows about, he knows the tech, all right? He knows how to like, you know, separate the vapors and the oils. I'm like, all right, this guy knows. So anyways, we had this great conversation. Then I go in the back and, cause I, I can't, I can't sit still, dude. It's the flight's like 16 hours, okay? I can't sit there and watch movies or sleep or whatever. It's again, packed super tight. So, and I'm a big boy. Like I'm not big, I'm like a medium boy, okay? So like, I'm sitting here like, oh man, this is so uncomfortable. So I, I get up, I kind of walk around the plane a little bit. I get in the back. Um, 
and I'm, I'm meeting people and I, I meet this one dude who's like a founder of this startup in like San Francisco, of course, right? Also going to India to like meet his team in India for the first time, of course. This is crazy. Then I meet this other girl, dude, and this girl is like, I, I swear to God, she's like, she looks like she's 28 or 32. She told me she was like 49. I'm like, what the fuck? And then she's like, I'm traveling all, all over the world. So her thing is like, she's like retired now, I think, or partially retired. And her thing is all about traveling all over the world. So I don't, it's, it's, it was just crazy. I love, so if you know anything about me, right? Like I'm one of those people who was like so gregarious. <laughs> I'm just out there like I'll talk to anybody. Like you're probably watching this video. It's like who the fuck talks to people on planes, right? Solar game, Mark does, right? Um, yeah, so just, I, I talk to people, I get interesting stories, it's, it's so fun, I love interviewing people, I love, like, just chatting with them about their life, and they, I don't know, people really like volunteer information to me, I guess, so it was really fun, um, anyway, so that's the flight, we get to Singapore, I land, I realize how easy it is to kind of just go in the country, that, dude, Singapore is fucking advanced, man, like, I'm, in a lot of different ways, right? Singapore is actually easier to navigate airport-wise, whatever, and it's cleaner than uh, America. Now, if I were to tier rank like airports in the world, I think like Japan airports is like still pretty top tier, like most amount of services. The freaking like train goes right into the terminal area. Like you leave the terminal, there's, there's a train and you don't need to take like a weird tram or something. There's a train that will take you to downtown from right there. You don't need to like, transfer from this like air train whatever to the train station you just go right but this is by the way like um um gosh it's the other airport like Haneda not not Narita Narita is a little bit different Haneda the newer airport is like this in Japan and there's like showers and everything Singapore has a similar setup it's like in general the visa is really easy um getting from there to the train is like fairly easy lots of like staircases though but still it's like very doable um so anyways I get on oh that's right so I land and, you know, my Grand Archive buddies are like, we're at the whatever hotel, I forgot what hotel, at the buffet waiting for you. I'm like, all right, well, I got to get on like a, a Grab. So, of course, me being kind of smart and pre-planning this stuff, I download this app called Grab, which is the Singapore standard of Uber, basically. And, you know, I land and I already have my card, everything set up. I just call a Uber, Grab, and I go to this uh, buffet, right? But, you know, like traveling, you're usually not very hungry and you're like a little bit tired. It's like really weird, right? So it's like night when I land too. So anyways, I go to this buffet and, and I, I meet for the first time. Uh, well, okay. I, I already knew Silzar and I, knew, I already knew Limelight. But I didn't know like Yap. Like I've never met him in person. And I've never met like uh, Legit Bit. So of course I meet these guys. Well, actually, no, I haven't met Legit yet. He's later. I meet Yap for the first time and he's like, he's amazing. Um, so... Yap is like, Michael Yap, by the way, is not like, he's, he's pretty, I think he's well known in the community, is he? I don't know. He's, he's a little bit silent, but he seems like a harsh guy, but he is so traditionally Asian. Like, by, by this I mean like, he's so accommodating, caring, and he, he has this like thing where he feels like, oh, you're coming to my, visit my country, I gotta really take care of you. So he, he buys everybody's bill, right, at this buffet. I'm like, what the, like, okay, this is a lot of money. Um, but hey, thank you, Yap, right? And he's like super like, oh, okay, here's how you get on the train. He's teaching us how to like navigate the city. Oh, here's where you go. There's an arcade here. Like, cause you know, he, he grew up in Singapore, right? Even though he lives in Australia now. Um, it's just like crazy how welcoming I felt when I was like, you know, I land, I go to this place and it's like very, very welcoming in general, right? Um, <laughs> of course, like Lime is in there like, I'm not sure what to eat. Like, cause he's, uh, <laughs> he's not very adventurous food-wise, right? understandable because he doesn't want to get sick before the tournament but also yeah like we're, we're talking like like limelight is is the most cautious person he, he'll he'll fly to singapore where there's like amazing asian chinese food whatever and he'll eat like burger king okay <laughs> and this is of course like the first night or whatever i remember we take him out to like eat food but i was not hungry so i, I just I'm gonna, I'm gonna head home y'all y'all eat and then limelight actually tried hot pot and he's like oh this this is so good hot pot is amazing right so that's his like new favorite asian food now is hot pot so we we got we unlocked some stuff anyways singapore we meet yap um really spent a good chunk of time with like Soldar and alan in singapore and just like learned a lot about those two people i think personally like alan is very um alan's pretty open alan's pretty like 
just like chill person to hang out with. Sildar sometimes, to me even now, can be a little bit scary. Like Sildar is a little bit mysterious, right? But if you meet him and you kind of hang out with him, he's he's pretty funny and he's like actually opens up to you a lot more. So maybe it's that personality thing. Anyways, you know, there's that. Uh, the food is amazing. So if you ever go to Singapore, highly recommend. Uh, and you're not there for like a tournament, whatever, or a presentation where you can't like, I don't know, get sick. Um, highly recommend trying all the local foods. They're so good. Like right below our hotel, um, I kid you not, I find like my home food from Northern China, there's this lady who's just selling this stuff. Like, and I was like, oh, that's like my favorite food. Oh, you, oh, this is a, this is like, so I, it's so hard to describe some of this stuff, but it's like a, it's like a kind of like a pancake thing, um, but it's kind of like a fried bread thing. And it's so good. And it's like from my hometown, I've not had it for like years. I, I basically can only get it when I'm in China. There's, there, I mean, even in America, even in like, Bay Area, where there's like a ton of Chinese food, it's kind of rare to find this stuff because it's kind of hard to make, right? A lot of people are like, uh, I'm not going to make that low margin food. Um, she was selling that. She was selling also liang pi, if you know what that is. But like, that's one of my favorite food too from like Northern China. I love that stuff. And just, she just had it. And I, I tried one. It was cheap. And it was, I tried one. Freaking the flavor was on, on the spot. It was good. So lots of options. Lots of these little food stall, food court type of things. Um, do not miss them. Try them out. Um, I had a lot of like good chances to go try all the food uh, throughout the five days I was in Singapore. So, and I, of course I meet legit bit, um, pretty funny guy. And we just, you know, like again, another, like, uh, he, I guess he's from New Zealand, not Australia. Um, anyway, so Lime, legit, like we hang, hang out a lot, uh, swimming in the pool, like chatting about deck lists and whatever, right? Um, so it's, you know, good, good times. Uh, also find out legit and Lime both are not adventurous so they will not eat anything like you know crazy so it's like basically if i eat with them i gotta eat like boring american food in singapore it's kind of like crazy and it's also super expensive like like we're talking like three x the price of what you can get uh as in singapore that's like way better so yeah um my general kind of feeling about singapore is um i think the, the, the country is super advanced i think in a lot of ways it is a like um a, a melting pot. It's like, it feels like America in a lot of ways because everyone speaks English. There's like a mix of all sorts of culture, but of course with the main main race or culture being like um, Asians, but kind of like the, the, the Chinese Asians, if that makes sense. Like they all speak Chinese, they all speak English. Um, I got lots of like Indians there too, but like in general, it feels like very Asian cultured, but also very Western in the sense that it's like very economically advanced. Um, and like the buildings, the, the infrastructure, the, the, the like architecture is super bad. So that's kind of like my general feeling about Singapore. Um, how are we, how are we doing on time? Okay. 13 minutes. We're good. All right. So anyway, Singapore, right? So like, of course we go to, um, like the local game store on like the Friday to kind of check things out before the Saturday tournament. And of course we, we go in there and we meet like the, the, the Malaysians, right? And these are not the, um, these are not the Malaysians from, like, okay, so the Malaysians are kind of divided into a couple of, like, groups. There's going to be the Malaysians who are, like, inland Malaysians, meaning, like, they literally can take a bus, right? There's a land border between Singapore and Malaysia. They can take a bus over, and they can just get here, like, two hours, whatever. Then there's some Malaysians from, like, the seaside, the island side, right? Like, namely, the, 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 the fellows I met were from Sabah. And, oh, my gosh, those guys are so friendly. I mean, I'm not saying the other Malaysians are not friendly. They're just, like because they're the first people I met. I was like, oh gosh, these guys are so friendly. But the funniest thing happened, right? So we walk in the game stores, me, Sildar, and Lime. We're walking into like this area where these guys are hanging out. And then like, I don't know, we're like setting up, we're looking at some products on the wall. And then I think it was Jerome, right? So I, I met the, the guys' names were Jerome, uh, Seswai, and then and one other guy. I totally, I'm so sorry, I'm, I forgot your name. But yeah, anyways, they were like looking at us and they're like, wait, are you Mark from Solar Games? I'm like, what the, okay, yeah, hey, yeah, of course I am. And of course I give, I give them the stickers, I give them some packs of cards, whatever, you know, this is my thing. If you recognize me, say hi to me, you get some swag, whatever. Um, but the funniest thing is like, Lime and Solar are just standing like, what the, like, hey, what about us, right? Especially Lime, I think, being that he's, he's kind of also like a little bit more, um, you know, has like appearances with his face. Um, but apparently, yeah, like they were, and then of course I'm like, this is Limelight, and this is Siladar, the guy who created the game. They're like, oh, and then they were like super happy. Um, it was crazy. And of course that night I lock in like some monster trade with like Jerome. 
Um, I ended up by, buying like four CSRs from this guy um, for a pretty good price, honestly. But yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, spend the whole, like a lot more time over the week with these guys. Super friendly. I mean, they, they were so nice. They like bought me food um, at lunch and those kind of things. We we're just chatting about what the situation in Saba is like. It sounds like in, like... The, the common story I'm hearing across the board in Southeast Asia is that there are diehard communities of all these like Grand Archive fans and they they will show up. Like stores have like good attendance, 12 to 20 people type of things for weekly events. And you know, even if it's like a small group, they somehow have congregated. And this is one of the benefits of like in Asia, high density living is like pretty common. Whereas in America, we have low density where like people are really spread around. Like for me to kind of go to the stores, I have to drive pretty far. But in Asia, in like, you know, high rises and apartment buildings, high density living means you have more chance of like finding a local game store with tons of people in the area to potentially be the customer. So it kind of works a little bit better, I guess, in those situations for people to kind of like congregate. Um, oh, one other person I met from, uh, oh, so, so okay, other, other, other Malaysians. These are, I think, are the, are the land side Malaysians, right? Not the seaside. Um, Dex, I literally met the real living incarnation of Polkok. This, this man looks like Polkok. When he smiles, he looks like the artwork for Polkok. So uh, no kidding, no joke. He is going to be, I, I hope he shows up and do this. But we were like talking about like him showing up to Worlds uh, cosplaying Polkok. It's going to be fucking hilarious. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll love it. Uh, I'm taking lots of photos with him when he does this. It's going to be so funny um, and so great. So yeah, we like he did. He did like the he like would smile. Like he does the smile, and I'm like, yeah, that's Pocock. Like a hundred percent. It's so good. Um, of course, okay. The other, the other person I meet also hilarious is Ten Ryu. Like I finally meet Ten Ryu in person. Right? I actually didn't know that was Ten Ryu because of two reasons. Number one, I've never really, I guess, like played against Ten Ryu, heard his voice, and I've never really like seen him. Right? He doesn't. It's not like he has his face on Discord. But I've seen him type a lot of stuff and we've had a conversation. I know that he speaks Chinese. I didn't even know he was um, Malaysian, right? Anyways, Ten Ryu, for those that don't know, is one of the funniest guys you'll ever meet in your life. This man needs his own stand-up comedy. Like, like, okay, so the one thing, like, next time you meet Ten Ryu, if you ever meet Ten Ryu, like, ask him about the meta of the Southeast Asia. It's hilarious. So he's telling me about like, oh yeah, so the Singapore meta is this, the Malaysian meta is this, the Taiwanese meta is this. I'm like, oh, this is fucking comedy gold, okay? Ten Ryu, if you're listening to this, you contact Comedy Central, you might get a whole bit. It's gonna be great. Um, yeah, anyways, just in general, Malaysians are just so, so friendly. And like, I just felt like, wow, it was really cool. Like, you know, I've never met these people, but it definitely felt like they were just like, my brothers, you know, I felt like I was so, I could just talk to them. It was, there was no barrier. There was no language barrier. There was no problems. There was no like, you know, issues. And the funny thing is they speak Chinese as well. This is even like even funnier too. So yeah, or some, some of them spoke Chinese, I guess I should say. At the day of the event, or maybe the, also the night of, that this is the Friday, everyone's kind of, so Agora Hobby, right? The store that we're playing the nationals is, um, uh, was to hosting like a Friday uh, weeklies, right? And it's like, it's amazing, right? So they host the Friday weeklies. The Saturday is the nationals, and Sunday is Top Cut nationals. But Sunday is also the regionals. So if you miss Top Cut, you would just re-roll re for the re regionals. So essentially, you could play Grand Archive on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the same store, and a ton of people showed up. So even on Friday, right? Normal weekly, let's say they get like 20 people. <clears throat> I swear, it was like 40, 45 people for the weekly, right? Because Everyone's kind of like testing, testing water, seeing what decks are being run, et cetera. It was just great, like getting there, sitting down, playing some of the players and seeing what people were like doing. Um, it, was, it was really cool, right? And so I met the Filipinos who were playing that night and I realized why they were playing on Friday because they were, I think most of the Filipinos, except maybe uh, Kevin, were judging, right? So a lot of the Filipinos came to this event to judge, to be the judge for the event. So it was really you know, great that they showed up. Um, to help out in that way so that we can have an event. But yeah, like I played and I, I'm chatting with the Filipinos and apparently they tell me like they love my channel and all that stuff. They love Talk GA. So yeah, happy to, happy to do this stuff for you guys. I'm so glad you guys are watching our show from across the ocean. That's just, I mean, it like, it blows my mind sometimes like what the reach of the internet has been able to allow like all of us to connect. 
just, just, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm getting a little like emotional right here, but like the fact that I can talk to a camera, put this on the internet, and somebody from Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore can watch it and be like, yeah, this guy's, this guy's cool. I like this guy. I'm like, oh, just that makes it so amazing. And when we meet for the first time or whatever, like we can say hi, like it's like, it's like we kind of already know each other because, you know, that is. I mean, there's a lot of bad things about our technology, but I think that's one of the best things that, you know, has come out of like our technology in this 21st century that, of, that we live in, right? <clears throat> so um, from the Filipinos, I did purchase um, two of the judge promos at the end of the, the whole event. I purchased two of the judge promos from them. Um, that's the Veiling Breeze ones. So those are now in my collection. Very happy about that. So. That was really cool. Thank you guys all so much for kind of selling that to me and make allowing me to have them, I guess. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what's next? Let's talk. Um, oh yeah, the Filipino guys, right? Just in general, like super funny guys, always joking, always laughing, like big smile on their face the whole time. I mean, of course, we're all playing Grand Archive, so everyone's already happy, but like just the amount of energy that these guys brought to the event was just amazing. So. Thank you guys so much uh, for, you know, being there and all that stuff, helping out. Um, and I love, would love to see you guys again. Um, yeah. All right. So moving on to Hong Kong. So Hong Kong guys, um, I didn't really meet a lot of the Hong Kong players. I know some of them showed up um, to the event. Like, I think, I feel like when I talked to Bobby, he told me maybe like six or four. I, I forgot the number. Not a large number, but still more than we thought, I guess. Um, I met this guy, I freaking gave up the whole, you know, gave up the whole joke, the punchline. Um, I sit down across this guy, I'm playing him, uh, in, in Grand Archive. I sit down and the guy has a shirt, right? And his shirt says Bobby Hill, right? King of the Hill. So for all the Americans, of course, it's like some old show from Fox you know, that we watch as kids. It was after the Simpsons, before Futurama, I forgot, it was some order like this, right? And like, I'm like, you like... King of the Hill? Are you like King of the Hill fan? He's like, no, but not, my name's Bobby, so I bought this shirt. I'm like, bro, that's legit. So he's wearing this shirt that says Bobby Hill, right? And it's like, it's not even a shirt. It's like kind of like, um, think like a baseball shirt, right? Or, or like, okay, like a referee shirt. So it has the lines, but it's kind of like a baseball shirt. It says Bobby Hill on it. And I'm like, crazy. So I'm talking to him about like the situation, what's happening in of Grand Archive. He's like, I love the game. I love how, you know, how the creators who made this game, he's like super passionate about it. He's like, one of the problems we have in Hong Kong right now is that there's only three stores that run this game, but they all like charge 20 USD, 20 freaking USD guys for locals. And I'm like, that's a lot of money. Like we go to locals and we like, you know, it's like what, 10 bucks, five bucks, you know, for some of the other events, they're charging 20 in Hong Kong. And of course, you know, taking like you know, um, taking like currency exchange and stuff like that. $20 for Hong Kong people is actually a little bit more than it is for us because we make like, I guess our like, you know, the, the value of our money is different, right? So and by comparison, just so you have a reference, the same stores charge like $5 to play magic. So I'm like, what the frick? Like, it's crazy, right? And it's not like the packs are way more expensive or anything. It's just like, the stores realize they can charge 20 and people still show up. And he, you know, Bobby was telling me <clears throat> they charge 20, but still they get like 12 people, 20 people for like weekly local events. And I'm like, that's insane. So, um, yeah, power to you guys in Hong Kong. Good luck. I hope the prices do fall a little bit there. Cause that sounds ridiculous. I don't know what kind of monopoly shenanigans your game stores are running, but dude, game stores, y'all need to stop. Okay please promote the game. It's a fun game. Let the players play, okay? Do not gatekeep them with money, right? Obviously. And then of course, like, you know, good luck to you guys in Hong Kong. Um, you guys are super passionate about the game. I can totally feel it. So, you know, keep, 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 keep going, right? Keep going on. Uh, and of course we come to um, the Taiwanese folks. I feel like I should make a separate video on the whole like Taiwan side because I did actually go to Taiwan. Um, but I'll just kind of briefly cover it here. If it comes up, I can talk about the whole Taiwan side a little bit too. Um, I think we didn't, nobody expected the Taiwan players to come because they have their own like little circuit tournament happening that same week uh, called the Grand Library, I think. Um, so Sildar was like, I think like maybe one or two Taiwan people will show up. He said none. 
And guess how many people, Taiwan people, Taiwan people showed up? 20. It's insane, dude. These, these, these dudes, right? These dudes are, you know, basically cut from the same branch as me, right? They freaking come in the store, they sit down and they just start vending. I'm, Dude, it's like, it's insane. Like, I think there's like three sets of them, uh, three sets of tables. They sit down, they can like open the binder, but they're not just like open the binder, like this is my trays, right? They got like a little stands for them and they're like displaying already. And like, all right, this is, you know, here's, inspect the wares, please. And it's not just like, oh, here's some random cars. These guys are like bringing out CSRs, right? And it's not just any CSRs, like Deanna B CSR, like the, the most expensive ones, right? And of course you got like, you know, Square Live cars and apparently like, like They've worked out some previous deals with other people, so they're already pre-trading all the deals that they've already worked out. Man, I was like, I was just impressed. I was sitting here like, damn, these guys know how to market manipulate, dude. They're like, they're in the action. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, anyways, like, you know, I had a blast like playing with them, chatting with them. It also kind of was cool because I spoke Chinese, but it's like different, right? So for those that don't know, um, I speak Mandarin, so do Taiwanese people, but our what's the best way to describe it? Our language is actually kind of different. The way that we describe things, the, the words we use, word choice, diction, are actually different, right? So it's, imagine it's like, kind of like British to US to Australian, that kind of like difference, right? We all speak the same language, we can kind of understand each other, but we don't always use the same words to describe things. So it was kind of fun. And of course, like talking to Taiwanese people, it was just fun to like discover, because I'm like, I'm super curious, right? Because Taiwan is one of those countries where they actually don't speak a lot of uh, English, right? It's not as prevalent as in Singapore, Malaysia, and Philippines. And so I'm like, how do you guys play this game in Taiwan? Because all the cards are in English. There's no Chinese translation, right? And they're like, oh, we just like gave nicknames to the cards, right? If the, if the card is obvious, like for example, like uh, Ghost of Pendragon, they just call it like, okay, uh, Ghost Dragon, easy, right? But then like other cards where it's like not so obvious, um, they had to give them nicknames, right? So there's a bunch of nicknames out there for these cards that they're they are like using, and some of them are fucking hilarious, dude. So um, I'll probably like I'll probably save some of these nicknames for a different uh, maybe talk GA. We'll talk about it on talk GA. It should be fun. Um, but it's like it's amazing, kind of just like hanging out with them, learning how the game is like played over there, and the passion, the passion of this game in Taiwan is insane, right? So I I mean look, I go to like I go to Taiwan, right? And I'm like, I went to the store in Taiwan that's like kind of like the original Grand Archive store. Meaning this store saw the game. I think they backed it. They, they, they didn't back the Kickstarter, but they started shortly after Dawn of Ash was released. So that was about a year ago. Um, and they were the first store in Taiwan to support the game. And of course, like, you know, the owner is super passionate about it. Their play space is amazing. And in this same store, right, we're playing, um, we're playing Grand Archive and I meet I kid you not, I meet Jimmy Lee's biggest fan in the world, probably, right? And this guy, like, dude, I don't even know how he pulled this off. He kind of he kind of looks like Jimmy Lee. He kind of has similar build, like a little bit like, like, like a little bit muscular dude, right? And he's like, he like, he has the full set of Tenoris like CSR. Okay, so he has the whole thing. Like every single, like level one, level two, both level twos, both level threes, right? All CSR'd out, and he's like, yeah. And he, what, what deck was he playing? Of course, fucking EK, right? And so, like, it's just so amazing, like, to see this. And he's like, he's telling me, oh, yeah, like, I saw Jimmy Lee play this at regionals. I was just, like, so excited. This is the deck. I, I felt like this is the deck for me. I definitely want to play this for sure, blah, blah, blah. He was telling me the, the stuff. So, of course, I took a photo of him. I, like, DM Jimmy, like, Jimmy, met your biggest fan, right? So, it's so good. And then, of course, I met some other friends in Taiwan as well, like, you know, Fish. And then I met like Chang, I met like Yodi, a bunch of these guys, really, really cool guys. Um, just in general, like, you know, this travel experience has been so good. Um, every time I travel, right, like it's, the thing is I, I have this expectation when I travel. I feel like I'm gonna of course learn some things and experience different things. In fact, I always gain way more than what actually, you know, like I expected. And it's just so fun. Like, you know, like for example, in Taiwan, um, I, of course, had some time to hang out with um, uh, Sister Chris, Roger, sit down, talk about card games, talk about, um, you know, just other card games, how they're doing, and had some time to also just hang out with Roger's friends from college. And it was amazing just kind of meeting them. And it's, it's kind of like opens up a different perspective of me uh, on somebody else and just seeing like, oh, the, if these are, 
you know, Sister Grace's friends, then I kind of have an idea of like what kind of personality he was, even in college. And, um, you know, his friends were super friendly, super nice, super outgoing, very like energetic and totally like my type of people, which is probably why like in a lot of ways I feel like, oh, you know, I feel really natural hanging out with Roger, right? Because it's like, I, I, I guess in a lot of ways, his friends could totally just be my friends. I, f I feel like honestly looking at them like, oh, these are like the, the SoCal version of my friends in Berkeley, right? Like I had that feeling, uh, you know, you know kind of hang out with them. Um, just in general, like it was such a good experience to travel. So I know it's not, you know, obviously economics, and all that stuff too, right? A lot of, you know, Grand Archive players are students. Um, so, you know, but as much as possible, I highly encourage you guys, if you have the chance, you know, in one of these upcoming ascents, you know, Grand Archive events, et cetera, do travel, right? Don't just go to the one that's local to you. I know that's gonna be more economical, more easier, easily accessible, et cetera, but do travel and do travel to a different country if you can. Because I think, you know, you'll have like um, a very eye-opening experience, right? This was my first time in Singapore. This is my first time in Taiwan. And for me, it was like really interesting to kind of see all the things that, you know, like I kind of somewhat expected, but learn a bunch of things I did not expect, right? Just to kind of see how people react, um, you know, kind of see how the culture is in different locations. This is one of the reasons also like when I travel, I love walking around. I don't really like taking uh, cabs like cross from, you know, location A to B. Um, I like walking the streets and seeing people, seeing shops, seeing like people chat and seeing how people hang out, seeing which area are like, I don't know, like, you know, of a certain type of people. Um, you know, for example, we were walking through Singapore and I recall like just seeing kids playing a little league in Singapore and then realizing how important that sport like baseball is to Singaporeans, right? Whereas like, you know, America, like we also have little league, but it's just like, it was something that I didn't expect, I guess. Like I, like I didn't know baseball was such a big deal for, for, uh, for, for Singaporeans, but it is, right? So like in Asia, for example, did you know in like Korea, Japan, right? Uh, and probably Taiwan, like baseball is actually kind of like important. And it's like kind of like a sport that a lot of people enjoy watching. Whereas here in America, almost like, I guess unless you're a super diehard fan, baseball is kind of like on the outs, right? We're a big, we're much bigger on like basketball, uh, and football, and then, you know, like, you know, those kind of things. So this is kind of stuff that you don't, <coughs> you won't really know until you kind of, I don't know, experience the culture, be part of it, be one with the country. Then you start picking up these little things and like specific things about that environment. And it's kind of fun. It's kind of nice. I really enjoy it. That's a big part for me for traveling. Um, this video is going pretty long, so I'm going to cut it off here. Thank you guys so much for kind of, you know, like staying with me, hanging out with me. Um, and thank you guys all. So I know there's a lot of people I did not mention in this video. I'm so sorry if I forgot your name or forgot you, forgot to shake your hand, etc. Um, I wish, I wish I took more photos. I think I'm always very photo shy in general. I don't like taking photos because I have this kind of like um, feeling like I need to go out there and really take it all in. But realistically, I think having like one or two really good photos with people um, really changes a lot of things. So, so my, my, my goal for upcoming Ascent um, Worlds, right, is I'm going to take a lot more photos with people and really just like have these kind of like moments where I can look back on and say, hey, you know, here's all the things, here's all the crazy stupid stuff we did in Las Vegas, right? Uh, and of course, it stays in Vegas, so hey, whatever, right? Um, <laughs> that's going to do it for me for today. I'm Mark from Solar Games. I'll see you next time. Thank you all so much for taking care of me. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate all the friendly people that I met and how you guys treated me in Taiwan, Singapore, the Malaysians, the Filipinos, everybody. Right? Thank you guys so much. The Australians, the New Zealanders, thank you guys so much. Okay, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Stay classy.